What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today I'm going to show you on how to make a simple spike trap. So we will go ahead and play an animation when we go over it and then also it will apply damage and activate a ragdoll so it looks like we just got killed. It's going to be a very easy video to follow so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need is to go ahead and of course get our spike trap animation. So I have gone ahead and left this cool sketch pub and free asset in the description so you can just go ahead and download it and unzip it. So once you have it unzipped it, you can just get the animation itself and just drag it into the content browser. And now we'll have a few uh, you know different options to import. So we're gonna go ahead and click reset to default so we have all the parameters as they are. And then we're gonna go into animation, okay, in the category animation, and make sure that import animations is on very very important and then we can just say import all or just import and there we go we have some warnings of some bones we always get that don't worry about that and now we have all the different components so let me just go ahead and create a folder so everything is a bit more you know uh organized so it's gonna be just trap and let me just get everything drag it inside trap and just wait a few seconds and it will be inside great so we go here uh, we'll find it over here. So we open the sculptor. Sorry, the animation sequence. You can see it. Uh, if I manage, it's okay. So okay, it's very small, but you can see um, it playing there. Okay, so the spikes are playing. Uh, now, another uh, one thing about the S is that it is um, the other way around. So we have to basically invert it. So we have to go into the ray scale over here and put it as minus one. So now it will go from, you know, being in the ground to showing up. I don't know why it just inverted okay but it's okay so we can just put it as minus one now it's very small so of course when we place it in our world we have to increase this size okay so now what we're gonna do is just right click and create a new blueprint class it's gonna be type actor because it will just be out there in the world and this will be bp underscore use for example trap and now we can go ahead and open this guy up and now what we can do is add a component and this will be the scale to mesh which will of course be the um, trap itself and now we can find it over here which i think is called yeah tripe so tripe not trap <laughs> and of course it's very very small so we have to make it uh, big so let's go ahead and just lock this and let's play a bit with the size so i guess that we have to go maybe even to 100 so let's see um okay it just froze there we go uh, i don't know why okay so i'll just unlock this and put 10 10 10 and i think we're getting a better result over here maybe we have to go into 50 actually yeah maybe we have to go into 50 so this will you know completely depend on the size that you want and so on but here we have our cool spikes over here great so now we can compile and save so of course this spikes um you know have to only trigger the animation when we are passing um basically uh, over so what we have to do is basically create a trigger zone so let's go up here into the side of the parent so it will not be child of the skeleton mesh or anything like that and we can just add a new component let's first search for a box collision let's go ahead and drag it here so this will be a the radius and you can see the square over here so now we can just go ahead and just change the box extent to fill up the um basically the trap itself and where we want to start and appear and we can change the set so it's not so high there we go something with these values works so 50 50 and 16 and then 16 of height that works perfectly for me but of course depends on your model or if you're using the same one it's okay but in the scale and things like that great so now when we pass over it we need to play the animation so first let's go ahead and just drag it into the scene to see how the size is and i'm seeing over here that well it is uh, quite small actually so let's go back into the blueprint and another thing i have to do is actually go and get the radius and put a child of the trap so now it will go ahead and rescale and um, depending on well, the actual trap let's go ahead and find this around 120 so in all axes of course let's go ahead and just put 120 and now this is something more of what we want great so now basically if we go through it of course the spikes have to appear and of course they will be hitting when there's no one there okay so we have to do a few things so let's go ahead and basically start off by going ahead and just playing the spikes appear animation when our character goes over 
So let's go ahead and select the radius uh, trigger. Let's go down in the details panel and we can find this event which is on component begin our lap. Let's go ahead and click this plus button so we will sign up into the event. So basically we want to make sure that the other actor entering in this uh, trigger is our character. So what we can do is just cast to third person character. Of course, if you're using any other uh, character blueprint, you can use your, uh, your one. Great. So now that we are making sure that it is our player who's entering in this trigger, what we can do is go ahead and play the animation itself. Let's go ahead and get the trap scale to mesh and we'll contract this and say play animation. And now this will not need to be an any montage or any kind. It's much simpler. We can just play directly the animation. So let's go over here. Let's plug it over here. Let's put this here. And then we can just find the animation that it is. Which I don't know if it was. Yes. Spike trap uh, height. Which of course we inverted it. So now it will not be height. <laughs> you know. So there we go. So we can actually go ahead and test this out. Now make sure. Okay. Before I press play, go into your radius and this will be by default, but just to make sure, let's go down and make sure that the collision preset is in overlap or dynamic, because if not, it might be in another type of collision preset that will not detect our player or whatever. So it has to be overlap or dynamic. So now we press play, it will go ahead and, you know, be out, we'll change it to be hidden. But now when we pass over here, okay, um, <laughs> you can see that it is something pretty strange. And of course, this is due to the animation. So as you can see over here, the animation is actually gone ahead and uh, rotated uh, for some reason um, in this axis over there. Um, so what we have to do is basically rotate it like this. Okay, so 90 degrees when we play the animation. Now, if you're using any other spike uh, model, maybe you don't have this issue, but in, in our case, we do have this issue. So we have to move the spike to be like this, which will be basically child. So we basically 90 on here so basically on the x-axis let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and open this and go here select our trap uh, mesh itself and then in rotation we'll put 90 of course we only want to do this when we play the animation so on here we can just select the trapped and then set and um, rotation and now the rotation will go ahead and be the relative rotation because it's relative to the blueprint itself and now we just want to change the X to be 90 and that's it. And now you will see that it will go ahead and play correctly without changing. Uh, now the animation did actually not play. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just make sure that um, we are only doing this once because maybe it's overlapping. So let's go. And before we actually play the animation, go ahead and just do it once. So making sure that it will not repeat multiple uh, times, etc. Now it will still not go ahead and play. So one of the reasons probably is because we have the ray scale to zero. So sorry to minus one. So if we were to put it at one, you will see that now uh, it will actually play as you can see. So we cannot directly change from the animation. Let's go back and put that into zero. So instead of actually just accessing this animation sequence from and playing it from the blueprint, we will need to go ahead and create an animation blueprint uh, for itself. Now, maybe you don't have this issue if you have another model, but for our model, we sadly need this. But hey, it's okay. Just go ahead into the content browser, right click and create a new animation blueprint over here. Now we'll go ahead and select the trap um, skeleton and say, hey, create ABP underscore trap it will be. Let's go ahead and open this guy up and now we can put him over here. So basically, we will need to create a new state. Just drag it here, say state machine. And this will just be honestly the uh, states, uh, you know. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. So basically, we'll have a normal state, which will be the idle. Basically, um, the spikes uh, saved. I guess we can call it that. Like basically, they're underground. And then we will have another state, which will be um, spikes up. <laughs> okay, spikes up. There we go. Great, so when this goes ahead and triggers, we will transition. Of course, right now, the, you know, they don't have the animation on, so we will have to go ahead and fill it. So another thing that we can do is go and duplicate the spike animation. Go ahead and duplicate it and call this the spike trap underscore idle. Let's go ahead and open this. And now what we're going to do is basically go into the last keyframe and just go a bit into the right, so into the left. So when it's nearly close, 
right click and then remove frame from 0 to 19. So now we only have this uh, still frame. So now we can save and close this and we can go into here and just get the idle from the asset browser that if you don't see you can just go into window found it and then the idle can just put it inside of here. And there you go and make sure to select it and put loop animation. Now we can go back to the states and now in uh, spikes up we of course have to play this animation over here. Now the play rate we will go ahead and change it from here to be minus uh, one. And now we can go ahead and just plug it over here. Great. So now we need to create the transition because of course, if not, um, well, we will not be able to go to our spikes. Let's go ahead and create, go ahead and create a new variable, uh, spikes out. I guess we can call it like that. Then let's open here and just drag it here. So if it's true, it will transition. And honestly, we don't need to transition back because our spikes will only play once and like, like that. That's why we also added the do once so they don't uh, go ahead and save and go outside. Of course, you can change that and just add a new transition backwards and delete this, but I just prefer it like that. Great. We need to go to the event graph and then go ahead and cast to our BP uh, trap uh, bl blueprint. So, um, okay. Uh, cast to BP trap. Uh, there we go. And for some reason, there we go. And now I can uh, put it with there. Great. great. Um, oh, okay. Of course, because it doesn't inherit for a pawn, so we cannot delete. Uh, we can now delete this. Uh, what I want to do is basically um, also just right click over here and say initialize animation. So basically, this was just trigger at the start one time, so at the beginning play. And then on here, we will go ahead and get uh, actor of class, and this will be the uh, trap over here. Okay. Great, and now uh, we can actually go ahead and cast into that object and then save it as a variable. So this will be the BP trap. There we go. And now when we compile, we don't have that error, okay? And actually, we can just directly plug it. We don't even need the node uh, for casting. So there we go. It's already you know, give us an output of that type. Great. So now in the update, we can just get the trap. And then we need to get if, if this is true. So we can just delete the play animation over here. And what we can do is just create a new variable, which is um, trap uh, up, <laughs> something like that. And we're gonna get it, drag it, and then in here, we're gonna enable it. Compile, go here, and now we can just get the uh, get trap up, and then set it in spikes out. So if there's a change, it will go ahead and assign it. So now that should be working, but of course we need to assign it. So in here, uh, we also need to get the trap, which I deleted the one over here. Just plug it in back. And in the viewport, we have to select the trap. And I'll go into the name class and put, of course, our trap blueprint that we have just created. Uh, now, you will see that it's actually rotated. So that will mean that we have to rotate it from the start because, of course, the idle animation will be like that. And now we can actually delete this node. So actually, things will be a bit simpler. Now, don't worry about the jiggle. Okay, we'll remove it in a second. But now, if I press play, you can see that the trap will be basically on the ground, and when I pass, it will go ahead and appear. So everything is going ahead and working pretty, pretty well. So the only thing left is to go ahead and, of course, get rid of the jiggle. So go into the idle. And the reason is that there's a lot of frames here. What I can do is get a bit more in depth into here, into the end, and right click, and then remove frame to one, and there will all only be one frame. So now, as you can see, is no, not possible. Now there's no jiggle. Another thing that you can go ahead and do is basically make the the trap animation in spikes up, select it, and put the play rate to me minus uh, two. So actually, it will play faster because I guess it was a bit slow. So I mean, this will depend on you. But now we can go. Up, there we go, and it will just appear. Good. So now we quickly now to go and make the last thing, which will be um, activating the ragdoll for this character so what we can do is go ahead and open the third person character real quick okay so it's gonna be the, the last thing over here there you go and of course later on you can play sounds and stuff but i will not cover that let's go here and create a new custom event and it's gonna be ragdoll okay and now what to do is get the mesh and as simple as that you say set simulate physics so we'll go ahead and activate all the bones to have physics and simulate ticked on and now what we have to do is go into the mesh and go down into the collision presets and make sure that this is set as physics actor. 
And now we're gonna go into the capsule component, go a bit up and set the collision presets to be ignore only pawn. So it will not go ahead and collide with its own uh, shop. So now in the trap blueprint, we can now go here and sorry, and get this and then say ragdoll. And now when we pass over it, it will go ahead and do so. Now, because these traps do have a bit of delay, we're gonna add also a delay over here. Like the animation itself takes a bit to enter, so let's go ahead and just put 8.2 seconds of delay. So now, you see that when I enter, it spikes out, and then I go ahead and ragdoll. There we go, guys. That's it. If you found it so helpful, I would really appreciate you to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine fight tutorials, so if you want to go ahead and check them out, go ahead and join my Discord server and follow me on all my socials, such as Discord, uh, sorry, Discord not, but Twitter and Instagram and so on. And now, yes, with what I said, bye-bye.